All right, resource modding and resource leveling. Okay, after we already learn the concept, uh, a network diagram. Okay, so what we are going to do with the with that information? Let's say we already develop network diagram and then we do the calculation. Uh, we get the project duration and then we get the uh, what we call total float, free float and all the information okay then what we can do with that ah so this slide and the rest of the uh, uh the the session uh, either today or the, the the last class we are going to focus on the application so there could be many application but we are just going to to focus on a few topics such as resource modding and resource leveling Okay, next would be uh, project crashing. Next would be uh, cash flow forecasting, which basically derived from project scheduling. So the fundamental is coming from project scheduling. Uh, then later on, on our last class, we are going to go into project monitoring and control, and then earn value management. And subsequently, on the last class, uh, we are going to talk about Microsoft Project hands-on session. Okay. Microsoft project hands on session. So the whole day uh, on the last day, perhaps we can go through. Uh, uh, I will show you how to use Microsoft project, uh, how to input data and then how to do uh, tracking. Then later on, you will basically try to uh, basically to, to, to duplicate what I'm doing online. Uh, so, so that will be part of the uh, Microsoft project exercise later on. Okay. Okay. Now let's go into our uh, resource modding and leveling topic. Okay. Let me. Okay, let's go into the slide. I think is it okay? Introduction, problem related to labor, uh, problem resource modding. We can apply into most of the time labor. Okay, that would be the critical thing, and then machinery as well. Normally, we do not apply into material, even though uh, when we talk about uh, resources, the three main resources that. Uh, uh, we, we basically use in the construction uh, normally man, machine, and material because material basically there are a lot of type of material, so it is quite difficult to to do material scheduling unless you do in box. Okay, in certain project, for instance, you are doing some, such as revetment, uh, such as growing breakwater, uh, then basically you can do that because the material are uh, almost the same except the size of the rock might be different okay so i choose a label in order to demonstrate the usage of smoothing and then basically leveling all right so um i think there are students from your yesterday class yeah yes yeah. some of them <laughs> are still coming i do not know okay never mind i just put uh, the notes there okay so today's lecture is for my master student uh, SHO class already completed yesterday. So please leave the session. Okay, we already completed the class yesterday. Okay, so um, labor normally, if we go into the uh, uh, direct cost, okay, we are talking about uh, construction cost. Direct cost of uh, construction would normally consist of man, man, machine, and material. If we split those things equally, so basically the uh, the laborer would consist around maybe from 
20 to 30 percent. I get my pen here. 20 to 30 percent. Just estimate. And then another portion will go into the machine. Uh, another portion will go into the material. So it depends on the type of the project. Okay. So just roughly. So, but 20 percent or uh, 20 to 30 percent is basically is a big, big number. Just imagine in um, most of the contract. Okay, if you if you look at the uh, annual report of the public listed construction company, they would normally roughly uh, report the profit, the net profit will be ar around 10%. Okay, the banking industry normally will profit the most. Maybe right now, the most profitable company would be uh, related to COVID things, uh, top globe and whatnot. But in normal situation, bank would basically profit the most. And the second would be going into uh, uh, maybe retail and then construction is maybe around 10%. Okay, even that 10% contractor basically having, having a hard time to achieve those targeted profit. Maybe initially they would put maybe around 25% or even 30%. But because of lack of control, because of many, many things, at the end of the day, they would be able to make a net profit uh, ten percent. Ten percent is uh, is good enough. Okay, it's good enough because just imagine if you are getting one hundred million ringgit of the project, so ten percent is a good profit to make. Eh? All right. So in order to make sure uh, the huge amount of uh, money that goes into this uh, labor, for instance, uh, do not go into uh, some kind of wastage or loss. So we need to properly manage. Even profit 10% is very difficult to get, not to mention this big amount of uh, basically values. So similarly, we need to manage uh, material and we need to manage uh, machine as well because the proportion of the construction cost is very big. Okay. So then, where is problem? Okay. When we uh, we manage man, machine, and material, there could be many, many problems. Example, labor, okay? We are going to deal with uh, the issue of unskilled labor. Unskilled labor is basically never-ended uh, issue in our construction industry. From the record that we have, uh, uh, the foreign workers that come to Malaysia, majority, maybe 60 to 70% can be considered as unskilled. And it is getting worse in the construction industry because from our survey, a few years back, I did a survey uh, over, I don't know, over 1,000 uh, cars around Johor Bahru area. We figured out their previous experience in their country before coming to Malaysia had got nothing to do with the construction. So just imagine they are basically learning, uh, they are basically learning while working. That would be the issue. So. The unskilled labor will result in many, many things, poor workmanship, and then uh, low productivity, et cetera, et cetera. And another thing is poor supervision. Because of the unskilled labor, basically we need many more supervisors. But unfortunately, if you go to any construction project, it looks like the number of supervisors might not be equivalent to the amount of uh, uh, project values. Okay. Uh, that is kind of cost saving the company is trying to do, but uh, it do have impact uh, toward many things. We do have unskilled people, unskilled laborer, which basically we need to to basically uh, have a good super supervision uh, supervisor in order to check all their works. But unfortunately, that is not the the, the issue. And then. Uh, they could be unreliable subcontractor. Right now, we are getting the uh, workers instead of the work we we subcontract to subcontractor. Now we are getting just the workers. Okay, so just imagine if we are getting a very lousy workers, then not much we can do. If, for instance, we do subcontract the job, the the work itself, then basically we can do something if the progress is not up to a certain standard. But then we are getting the laborer. So we need to say we are the one that have to manage uh, the, the issue. Okay. 
slow mobilization may be due to uh, 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 transporting, especially the uh, local people. In some states, Pantai Timur, Sabah and Sarawak, we still have uh, local people. They might not be staying at the uh, whatever, rumah kongsi, whatever. Okay, so the transportation could be the issue. So all those things basically will have implication toward the um, construction productivity, which it basically will affect the work progress. And the one that we are going to zoom into is basically shortage. Okay, shortage of manpower due to many many things. Even though we can mention strike, not strike in a big way. Okay. Uh, in Malaysia, we do not have a strong union, especially related to construction industry. But sometimes people uh, do protest in a smaller, uh, smaller way. If, for instance, they are not getting the the the, the salary on time, if they are not getting the uh, uh, the, the appropriate pay, etc., etc., and that will basically affect the uh, project as well. What we are going to zoom in is the issue of poor planning okay the the issue that we mentioned here some of the issue we might not be able to resolve such, such as unskilled labor because that is the way uh, how the workers are being brought into malaysia due to some kind of uh, maybe associated with business and some uh, political issue so which we have no control but the one that we can control is basically planning okay Poor planning, because when we talk about planning, uh, we are the one that basically do the planning. Um, as a contractor, for instance, we are the one that do the planning. So basically, we can do something. Uh, so because our topic is about planning, so we want to zoom in uh, in that particular in that particular uh, issue. Okay, all right. Then another example, machine. Machine also do have problems. Okay, we if we talk about uh, material also do have uh, some problem. So some of the problem with machinery could be the machinery breakdown because uh, we do not have the maintenance culture. Uh, we basically repair things when uh, things basically already broken, and then uh, unavailability. We do not do the market survey. It has something to do with the planning as well. If we have done planning, so we basically know when exactly to get uh, to acquire our machine. So we prepare beforehand uh, where to get those machinery because some of the big, big capacity machinery is very difficult to get. There might not be many available. And even if they are available, they are already being uh, booked by certain uh, company. And then the issue of inefficiency due to the undercapacity or overcapacity, the selection of machinery is very important and will affect as well the uh, uh, the productivity. Remember, how do we calculate activity duration? It has something to do with the selection of the machinery because we need to take into account um, what we call machine output capacity. Okay, but all those things. Uh, even though it is an issue, the one that we want to zoom is basically the shortage. The shortage of machinery due to maybe poor planning. Okay, we do not plan properly, and at the end of the day, we just simply realize that okay, by next week we are we need that kind of machinery. We need uh, how many number of machinery? We just suddenly realize if we have done a proper planning for sure, we we already know those things. So we, there is no issue that we are not getting the machinery in time. We do not want to bring the machinery too early or too late because too early meaning to say we need to pay. If, for instance, we need to rent, we need to pay the machinery uh, much earlier and the machinery have nothing to do because there is no job for the machine yet. Okay, So that is an example of wastage. We do not want to bring very late because when it is late, it will affect all kind of work. Nowadays, for instance, crane is very important. All the work basically require crane. Uh, so those are the things that basically we are going to relate to this uh, planning and scheduling in this class, actually. Okay, before we go into this uh, detail of smooth projects, smoothing and leveling, 
normally in a project, whatever project, we are going to come up with a, what we call a, a CPM, critical path uh, network diagram, critical path method, uh, network diagram, we can basically submit the bar chart and then subsequently the network diagram. So bar chart is very good in order to for us to look to see the overall uh, planning of the project. This could be a master plan, meaning to say we just simply put a big, big item there. We do not basically split into a smaller, smaller item. That will be the detailed uh, planning, okay? Just to see the overall, because uh, what I am going to relate is basically from this uh, bar chart or gun chart, then we are going to get something, okay? What are we going to get? Uh, for instance, the uh, tabulation of uh, manpower, especially. So we can tabulate almost uh, everything. Let's say project manager, site engineer, etc., etc., and look at the number that is inside this uh, column. If, for instance, if you, we are using Microsoft Project, if we input resources in Microsoft Project in detail uh, resource, resource sheet, then automatically we are going to go to the resource usage. Uh, we are going to see all these kind of tabulation, very similar to what uh, I'm showing you. But uh, this diagram uh, is basically the real from the real project, long, 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 long time ago. Okay, that I was involved long time ago. Okay, so even long, even without the the, the computer software, la, long a long time ago. Uh, the planning, the planning engineer basically did the same thing. Uh, that is the concept that basically we are uh, learning. Okay, next would be uh, uh, another tabulation. Uh, now it basically zoom into uh, manpower. For instance, uh, carpenter, barbender, concreter. We can split according to the trade. And if you notice, for instance, brick brick layer. Why brick layer is appear appearing in uh, this kind of zone, uh, this kind of man? Basically, it relate back to the gun chart that we basically do brick layer. Okay, this uh, this uh, uh, particular uh, date there. Okay, that is the connection. And how do we get those number? Well, we need to calculate. Okay, the planner basically need to do the calculation. And if you look at the number, it the number looks very nice. For instance, uh, look at the door and window, 5, 5, 5, then 10, then 20, 20, 20, and then it goes. It looks like there is a pattern. This kind of the, uh, the data is basically the finalized data. We might not get this data on, the, on our first draft, second draft. So normally when we submit, Okay, we submit uh, either for our own usage, we submit to the client, whatever. We are going to finalize and uh, after round of uh, revision. So the idea is that, okay, similarly, uh, for plan, okay, for plan, we can do that because plan normally, uh, we are not going to have so many uh, type of plan in the entire project compared to material. Material could be in terms of thousand, we are not going to do that in uh, in our scheduling, okay? So we can do that. Example of a concrete mixer, how many times, then how many number, it depends on the, the activity scheduling. Okay, so the, uh, the tabulation of number basically will be related to the, um, to the activity uh, that basically use those kind of machinery or those kind of manpower okay now we are getting into this kind of resource graph we call it resource graph or we call it graph or resource histogram histogram all right resource graph or resource histogram okay so it looks like the resource uh, histogram graph looks very nice uh, um, by nice, I mean it looks like it is uh, increasing gradually and there is a peak there and then decrease gradually until the end of the uh, resource usage. Okay, 
So structural work and total workforce. So meaning to say, if we tabulate, if we split into many categories of the workers, so that would be the, um, the, the graph, how it looks like. Similarly with architectural work, so the graph look very nice. This is what this is kind of graph that we are trying to get when we uh, tabulate our resource later on. Okay, so how do we get this kind of graph? This is this situation we call it uh, resource smoothing. The concept of resource smoothing. So now similarly in the bottom graph, this is what we call smoothing. Smoothing meaning to say gradual increase. And then the peak, we cannot do anything because of, of course, when uh, the work is basically is uh, uh, is at the peak, meaning to say everything is uh, at the maximum uh, capacity there, then you will reach a maximum point, And then basically you gradually decrease when the work is basically uh, getting less and less. Okay, problem related to labor that we already mentioned, many of the, the, the issue we might not be able to settle, as I mentioned, re issue with regard to uh, unskilled laborer, okay? Because the intake of the laborer system in Malaysia is like that. It will take long, long time to, to, to resolve the issue. But the one that we can basically resolve is the issue re related to the poor planning. Poor planning meaning to say, um, why basically, basically in some situation we are not getting the uh, basically the uh, uh, the right number of uh, workers or machine at uh, the right time because of poor planning. We do not take those things into account. Okay. All right. Now there is a two concept when we do planning: time driven and resource driven. Time driven and resource driven. Okay. Let's take a look at these two issue. So let me draw something time driven time first thing time driven let's change it into different thing there time driven concept let's say a certain activity um let's take example of piling piling work okay piling work and then uh, this is what we call uh, duration, duration, and this is what we call resources, resources, okay. For the time driven, for the time driven, let's say we do calculate based on productivity, okay. We do calculate based on uh, productivity. And then uh, uh, we decide to uh, uh, time driven. Okay, first thing time driven. Okay, time driven. Normally we are going to set. Let's say we put ten days. Okay, so we lock the time. Okay, we lock the time. Then basically we are going to figure out what could be the resources. Let's say piling rig. Maybe we need to two piling rigs. Just example. Okay, so we lock the time for 10 days, that will be time driven. And then at the end of the day, we are going to calculate, let's say, if we are going to complete in 10 days, then basically we need two piling rig. That will be the resources. So that will be time driven. Resource driven. Okay, resource driven. So resource driven is the situation where we basically lock the resources. Let's say we can afford to use only one piling rig. For sure, subsequently, the activity duration will, would be affected uh, according to the number of piling rig that we use. So by comparison, if you look at if uh, for 10 days, basically we need two resources. If basically we already locked, uh, resources for one day, then basically we basically need 20 days uh, in terms of duration to complete. So this is the two scenario that normally uh, we use in construction industry. Uh, either we can use time driven, we lock the duration first, and then later on we figure out if we need to complete within 10 days, then 
what could be the required resources. On the other hand, we can log the resources and then we figure out about the uh, duration. So this concept, this two concept have something to do with the one that we are going to talk about. This is what we call uh, uh, resource uh, labeling. This is what we call resource labeling concept. So resource labeling concept is basically related to resource driven. Whereas the um, what we call uh, another one is a uh, resource smoothing. Resource smoothing. Resource smoothing is basically related to this concept. Okay. The resource leveling. Uh, the good thing is that is it is much easier to to basically do, and without you realizing. Actually, it is being widely used in the construction industry. Example, tower crane. Uh, for many, many uh, uh, high-rise building, for instance, in normal situation, eh, we only set up one, uh, one tower crane. One tower crane. So, we need to say one tower crane is basically we already lock only one uh, resources. Even though in certain sit situation, we might need to use more than a crane at one time but because there is no space uh, to put whatever crane uh, in that particular area so we have to make do with uh, available resources and what we need to change is basically uh, the arrangement of activity so when we want to change the arrangement of activity this is when uh, what we call we are going to utilize the activity total float or free float if uh, they are available but if not then uh, there could be some implication in terms of we not we might basically prolong a little bit uh, certain duration in order to accommodate uh, the utilization of that limited resources without us realizing about the specific name in the book is is already there for many many years maybe he, I don't know, 10, 30 years ago, people already talk about this kind of concept. But in reality, that is the, the things. And whereas the resource smoothing, uh, resource labeling is a good thing is that we already, uh, we already implement those things. And then there is a function in the Microsoft project that we can basically use with regard to resource labeling. But unfortunately, with regard to resource smoothing, there is no a specific button that we can just simply press and the computer will help us in uh, that kind of uh, exercise because resource smoothing require you to look at the uh, uh, the overall the network the overall network and then adjust then uh, those things uh, uh, in accordance to whatever available plot in order to get the best of the resource uh, utilization uh, so because maybe because of that, uh, the computer might not be uh, uh, having that kind of button yet. Maybe in the future with the advance of artificial intelligence and whatnot, I'm not really sure. Maybe one day we can see those things. All right. So now, resource modding and resource leveling. So resource modding is the situation. Do we have another? Okay, maybe here. Resource moving, okay, uh, is the situation when uh, the time is basically maybe this one is much better. I supposed to delete this one, okay. This one is much better. Okay, resource moving. Resource moving is used when the time constraint, okay, the time constraint takes priority, okay. The objective is to complete the work by the required time while avoiding peak and trough. Pick and trough is like, do we have any, uh, okay, there, there is an example there. Pick and trough is basically the peak is the, uh, if you look at the graph, this is what we call the peak. This is what we call peak and the trough is here. Now, peak and valley lah, eh, kita panggil yang puncak dan juga lembah uh, berdasarkan graph ni. Okay. So, uh, time constraint, resource modeling is used when the time constraint take priority, meaning to say, um we are going to
fix the time, the the activity completion basically will not be affecting any uh, time completion. We do not adjust on the timing. The only thing that we are going to adjust is basically resources. As I mentioned in this concept, we can adjust resources. As long as uh, we achieve the time that we already lock. So basically, in the resource modding, we fix the time. Or we need to say that the time cannot be changed anymore. We, that is our assumption. But we can play around with resources. Ah. So in some situation, when we want to add more resources, the cost might be a little bit increased. But uh, that could be compensated with the concept of time is the essence. If the time is much more important, a little bit increase of cost would be um, would be uh, within our limit. That should be okay. The resource leveling, as I mentioned, uh, resource is the one that we fix or limit. Whereas the time can be adjusted uh, if uh, permissible. Uh, as uh, we try to adjust within the uh, total float and free float of the available uh, uh, activity in the time frame, but then if that is still not possible, as in the case of tower crane, not much that we can do, especially when we do uh, construction activity in the urban area where the space is so crammed, we cannot basically put up any more, uh, even mobile crane anymore. So what we can do is basically just simply adjust the timing. But adjust, adjusting the timing uh, does not mean we are going to adjust the contract period. Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is that, okay, the contract period, well, let's say you are, we are getting the contract period for two years. Okay. Then within that two years, you are going to split the activity according to WBS. So what I am referring now is basically certain activity within that two years, for sure you have two, many, 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 many activities. Okay, let's say for the first month, for sure you have a set of activities. So what I'm saying is that you are, you are going to adjust uh, the timing of the activity within that month. Maybe if you cannot uh, complete complete all the activity due to the limitation of resources within one month. So perhaps you are going to adjust a little bit and maybe encroach into the following month by a few days. But then uh, the upcoming activity, of course, you need to be to be to be adjusted as well. Otherwise, you are going to encroach the project uh, the the contract period. Uh, the, we are not going to touch on the contract period. We are just going to adjust. Um, the activity within the contract period. Remember what I told you before? Actually, when contractors are getting a contract, let's say the contract simply say two years, then contractor will do the planning with all whatever the construction method, uh, resources, whatever. He can basically complete the job within one and a half year, actually. But then he basically spread the whole, uh, the whole thing uh, within two years because why basically you uh, you want to uh, uh, finish earlier if for instance uh, without any incentive if you put everything crammed together at the end of the day if there is a delay then the client will start asking you uh, so you do not promise that thing you just promise something that uh, you you can basically uh, uh, manage for instance when you say to people let's say you want to travel from jb to kl by car you know that from JB to KL, uh, normally it will take around uh, three and a half uh, hours, uh, maybe four hours, but you are not going to promise uh, the person uh, three and a half hours sharp. Of course, you are going to give some extra time. You, you would say uh, maybe uh, five hours. Uh, if you get uh, uh, to the JB earlier, then basically you, you can do your thing. Then only at the specific time, then you meet your client or whatever uh, that is the same concept okay now resource modding resource modding uh, so the concept of resource modding this is example of a uh, resource histogram resource histogram or the resource aggregation 
resource aggregation is example of uh, let's say you tabulate the resources on whatever basis maybe on a monthly basis let's say this is the first month second month third month fourth month fifth six seven eight month okay let's say that is your uh, resource tabulation and it looks like your resources is up up and down so up and down situation let's say if your resources is a large number of people that you need let's put some number here maybe uh, let's say this is 100 workers 100 workers this could be around uh, 180 okay, 180 this could be around 120 this could be around 200 and uh, next month will be down to uh, uh, 880 then up again uh, 100 then up again 130 or 40 you see that is kind of uh, resource uh, requirement based on the scheduling that you do so why what do you think about this kind of uh, uh, issue well for the first month 100 then you go into 180 okay you maybe you can you can be prepared okay but then what happened in the third month 180 and then suddenly you only need 120 what would happen to the, the 60 people are you going to lay off them ah that would be the situation so when you lay off them then uh, the next month you need 200 people they are not going to come back to your workplace because as a workers, they are not going to be paid monthly salary. They are going paid based on when there is a work, there is payment. As simple as that. Okay, so that will be the issue. Uh, and the workers do not like that because inconsistent in a job, meaning to say inconsistent in payment or salary and what they are going to eat for the next uh, month. So that basically will give some kind of repercussion in terms of what? In terms of many things, we already mentioned about some of the issue here. Uh, example, it will affect the morale of the workers, motivation of the workers, and then this continuity of the employment, and then it will uh, generate what we call a labor turnover. Labor turnover is the term that we use uh, for the employment is one thing. Sometimes we also use in terms of the uh, cash flow, uh, basically the annual sale. Uh, turnover and then it will affect the productivity so that kind of situation as a result of inconsistent uh, resource uh, utilization so the issue is that can we transform this graph into this kind of graph this is what we call resource smoothing uh, where we are going to increase the utilization of resources slowly so that we have ample time to 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 get people to to uh, to secure the number of people and then the peak is there and then when basically we do not need so many people then we do have ample time because it is gradual it decrease so that we can channel the workers to uh, other places or other project or whatever things nowadays they are swap of labor i think there is a center in kl swap of labor that so the contractor can go to that center and try to uh, to get the workers so let's say the workers from the other side already completed and then they do not know where to go but there will be uh, some somebody who basically need them so that will be a good uh, kind of uh, center so that everybody can get the information all right so that will be the what we call resource smoothing then next will be resource leveling so resource leveling is the concept it is much uh, easier concept okay compared to resource uh, smoothing uh, let's say when you um put you, when you uh, come up with the resource histogram or resource aggregation your resources look like this maybe in the first month second month third month four fifth six seven eight month 
Uh, it looks like some of the month, basically, you not you do not require that kind of uh, workers due to the fact that uh, the workers normally we are going to categorize into trade, unless you are doing uh, it is like housing project. Majority of the small small project normally use the same workers group of workers. Maybe there could be around uh, ten to twenty workers, so they will do the rest of the work from the beginning until the end. So they are what we call multi-talented workers. They can be barbender, they can be carpenter, they can be concreter, everything. So that is normal situation. If you have those kind of situation, uh, then you can basically lump, lump them together. But in this situation, you might ask why basically in the second month, fourth month, fifth month, there is no graph. Well, because there is no job for that category of workers. Okay, that would be example. So now this is the situation. Maybe in the first month, a certain group of workers, maybe we, we can say carpenter. Okay, uh, maybe in the first month we basically require around uh, maybe five, and then maybe around uh, three, maybe around six, and uh, maybe around three again. Okay, so that would be the situation. So we do not want this situation to happen or even we can use this thing uh, uh, in terms of machinery let's say we need um, maybe excavator or something okay we want to limit uh, when you limit this is what we call resource leveling uh, you level the resources or basically you limit resources you just want the resources to be three in number at all time at all time so what happened is that in the first month, you suppose from your scheduling, you, you are supposed to require five, but then you only allocate three. So what does that thing mean? Uh, so meaning to say, uh, the, the, the balance of this work have to be done in the next month, for instance, can be extended. If that is permissible, if that is permissible, okay? But you have to bear in mind some of the work has to be completed within that particular month because uh, there might be other activity which connected to that activity. So for sure it must be completed. And that, that will be another situation. If that is the situation, then you will see something will happen later on. Okay, if let's say in the second month, so there is no, no other work that uh, connected to those kind of job. So basically, you can continue in the second month. Okay, that's fine. And then the third month is going on as usual. And the sixth month, for instance, uh, the excess one, you can do in the following month, for instance. So you can still complete within the time frame. So this is a good example. But if in the, another situation, as I mentioned, uh, you cannot basically do in the second month anymore because um, uh, the other that work, that particular work had to be completed by hook or by crook in that particular month because it had to be connected with uh, other activities which is not shown in this graph so there is possibility that you have to extend the project beyond what uh, is the original uh, uh, what we call time frame not to extend the entire project duration which is according to the contract uh, maybe two years. What I mean is basically within the um, time frame or the specific activity. Okay, uh, that is an example. So resource leveling, that could be the issue. And later on, when we, uh, when I show you in Microsoft Project, that will be on our last day of class at the end of the semester. Couldn't remember when. Uh, then I will show you example of resource leveling in the Microsoft project. When we extend, uh, when we when we have a resource conflict, meaning to say two activity require the same resources. Whereas the resources that we put is basically limited to a certain number, then we are going to have a choice. Either we are going to adjust the, uh, the activity. When we adjust the activity, for sure we are going to uh, go beyond what is the uh, uh, tentative deadline. If we can afford uh, the new deadline in terms of a uh, uh, few activity, that should be okay. If not, uh, what could be the solution? 
So the computer, the good thing is that computer will uh, give, when we adjusting, computer will automatically give us uh, immediately the indicator. Oh, okay. It show that you are running uh, beyond the, the, what we call the projected completion time. So it is up to us to react. Okay, the computer just give us some indicator. Okay, but in our class, we are just going to uh, see how we can basically manually do this thing on a simple, simple project. So that is basically the concept about resource modding and resource leveling. So again, resource modding, when you initially uh, come up with resource aggregation, a resource aggregation is the co the cumulative resources that you plot uh, according to weekly, monthly, or even daily. You can do that. So you are going to see the peak. Peak meaning to say yang puncak, and then the trough. Trough ni maksudnya yang lembah lah. So this kind of situation might not be good, as it would affect the morale, motivation of the workers. It affect labor turnover. People just simply come to work your workplace, work for a few weeks, and then basically left. Uh, that is not good for any organization. High labor turnover or high, what we call turnover rate, is not good in any organization. It basically reflects something is not right. Okay, something is not right in your organization. So perhaps we want this kind of smooth. We call it smooth resource histogram. So how to transform from this kind of messy graph into this kind of graph? Actually, we can. Okay. So that's why we need to look at the uh, our scheduling. Because remember, scheduling, we are the one that do the scheduling. Meaning to say, we are the one that can adjust the scheduling. All right. So that is the concept. And now... Project duration, resource modding, we already mentioned about the issue. Uh, we do not adjust anything about the uh, project completion date. Project completion date remain the same. The only thing that we adjust is we are going to adjust the activity uh, start time. And then uh, remember, why do we calculate early start, early finish, late start, and late finish? Maybe some of you are still wondering. Why on earth that we have to go through difficulties, huh? calculating early start, early finish, and then we get confused some more? Well, now is the application. Actually, in a project scheduling, we don't have to use uh, the early start for all the activity. We can use combination. Some of the activity can we can use early start date, whereas some activity we can use the late start date. If, for instance, the late start date and early start date is not the same. If it is the same for sure, you, uh, you cannot adjust anymore. Then, then another thing is that we can use in between. Not, uh, not really at the earliest start date, not really at the latest start date, but in between. We need to say, um, let's say we start our class at nine, and then we finish at five. That that would be the time frame. If I want to start late, the latest I would start maybe around um, eleven. But I can start at 9.30, I can start at 10, I can start at 10.30. I can still finish within the time frame uh, 5 o'clock uh, with the 6 hours of learning period. Uh, that is the concept. Okay, having said that, now we come into this, uh, how to do this resource uh, smoothing and subsequently resource leveling. Okay, so we start with the step. Step number one, list all activity, list all activity. Uh, I would say not only list, we are going to sort. That would be the best word, sort and list. Sort and list activity according to the early start date. According to the early start date first. But then the issue is that some of the early start date could have the same date, could have the same value of the early start date because some of the activity basically start, maybe start at the same time. So then the issue, if we are going to sort according to the early start date, 
then we are going to see that some of the activity basically do have a similar start date. Then how are you going to sort? Sorting, we need to say, you are going to put in terms of priority. Which activity you are going to put as a number one, and then as number two, as number three, etc., etc. Later on, we go through the, the table. So if that is the situation, then we are going to look at the total float value for that activity. For sure, activity which have the lowest or smallest total float will be prioritized. Will be will be done first. Okay, will be done first, and then activity which has some value of total float, we are going to put at the letter uh, letter uh, in the list. That will be uh, first table. Okay, I would I would say this is the first table, table number one. I will sort according to early start. Then if the early start basically have a similar value, then I will sort according to total float. Then basically I will list all the activity uh, in terms of uh, their parity of the early start date. Which one comes first? Okay, that will be table number one. And then perhaps I can split this thing. Table number two. Table number two, I will basically list a uh, sort and list activity according to the late start date. And again, if a uh, late start date also do have a few similar date, then I would basically sort uh, look at the total total float value. Then I will put them in term of listing. Okay. Then the next uh, step, I would basically draw resource aggregation graph according to table one and then table uh, table two uh, uh, listing. Okay. Later later on, I will draw. And then I make comparison. I make comparison which graph would be the best in terms of resource graph. So we need to say, do do graph looks like this or in whatever situation? If after doing the sorting in table one and table two and then draw the graph, then only you can see uh, the uh, the resource aggregation. We which, which which uh, early start date, uh, which basically date is the best. If, for instance, both basically not the best date, uh, then basically you have to do some kind of adjustment. As I mentioned to you, uh, good scheduling would basically use some of the early start date, and then some of the, of the activity would basically use the latest start date, and then um, some of the activity we can use in between not really the early start date not really the latter start date in between so that the resource graph looks nice uh, that is the concept okay now let's take a look at um, example okay example okay before we go to break 10 10 okay figure three let's take a look at figure three Let's say we do have a list of activity. So as I mentioned to you, this topic, projects, moving and leveling, is the application of planning and scheduling that we already learned in the first class, for instance. So by now, for instance, you should be able to draw a network diagram based on activity on arrow or activity on node or PDM diagram. Okay. Let's say we do have list of activity. Um, list of activity here and then uh, so long list of activity and then we do have labor uh, previously in our class in our first day of class we only do scheduling based on duration we do not uh, include the label and now we are going to utilize the label then only you can uh, apply the concept of resource smoothing and resource labeling. Instead of uh, using label, we can use machinery. But I do not uh, give example of machinery. The concept is also similar. Okay, concept is also similar. But duration must be there. Duration is not shown here because duration is being shown in the diagram. Okay, first thing first. Let's say you are getting uh, some information 
So activity duration is given and then uh, acti uh, activity listing is given. Duration should be given as well, which is not shown here. And then the liberal, the resource requirement is shown. So the three information. And then the uh, activity one and two, there is no need predecessor because once uh, we use AOA diagram, one and two mean to, meaning to say that you are going to connect the node number one until node number two, automatically you will know those kind of uh, activity. So the activity naming is basically activity one, two. That is the name. Then what shall you do? You need to basically draw the network diagram. So this is an example of network diagram that we can draw. Okay. Let's say this is activity one and two. So that this is the name of uh, the first activity. Activity one and two. Let's say this is activity one and two. Okay. So the, the duration of the activity is basically five. So five is being written there. Never mind, you can put five at the bottom. This is just uh, want to show to you. First thing first, when you see this kind of uh, example with regard to project smoothing and leveling, we must resolve the network first. We must develop the network. So we already developed a network diagram. So this figure is basically the early start. This figure is basically early finish. This figure is basically late start and then late finish. Okay, so that is the value. So we complete the activity uh, duration in 20 days. Okay, this is project duration. And then you notice that the one being marked here, double uh, slash line there, these indicate the critical path. So these activity are critical path. Okay, critical path. Okay, those are the critical path. So it is very important when we develop network diagram for resource moving and leveling, we we have to complete all the information early start early finish late start late finish because we want to know the total float uh, is it necessary yeah especially total float free float is not necessary especially the total float okay because we we will use that total float uh, in order to do the adjustment later on so we already get the uh, critical path and we can also calculate the total float for each of the value uh, remember how to calculate the total float. You can take this value 16, for instance, for activity 5, 6, 16 minus 13 minus in the middle. Uh, for me, for AOA diagram, uh, so just take the right hand side value, for instance, activity 4, 7. You can take 17 minus 14 minus basically 3, which is also equivalent to what? Uh, uh, zero. Okay, so that would be example total float. So you, when you calculate those things and later on, it will be very helpful. Okay, next. Okay, next would be uh, this example of uh, the overall tabulation. Okay, the overall tabulation from this network diagram. We just tabulate first. List of activity total float is here. Early start date. Uh, remember. Way back in uh, my step-by-step uh, -step here, early start date. So early start date must be there. So we table it first. All the listing, okay, we just list first. Early start date is there. Late start date is also there. Total liberal uh, based on um, uh, information from the question is there. So this is just information that we are got, uh, getting from our network diagram. Then come... Table one, I uh, see. Table one, sort and list activity according to the priority or timing based on early start and then total float. Okay, how do you do this? When you want to do this, actually, first thing that you should uh, list is basically early start. This is the first listing that you should focus on. Early start date. You notice that we are going to list according to which which time basically come first? You see, 0, 5, 5, 5, then 11. So from small until the big value 
of the uh, what we call a list type. Uh, that is what we call uh, sorting. Okay, sorting. Okay, sorting. We, this is the first sorting. Okay, um, first item. According to early start, the early start is basically zero. According to our uh, value here, okay, zero. For sure, any project will start from, from zero. So zero, the first activity will be activity one, two. Okay, so activity one, two will, will be uh, putting in the term of, let's say, let's say we do have a num number. So item number one, okay, that will be uh, the listing of the first item. Then we take a look at another uh, other early start. So it looks like the next early start would be in the fifth day. But it looks like ah, on the fifth day, there are three items there, not only one. Then how are we going to choose which one first? So that's why in the next column sorting, we are going to look at the total float. You notice that total float value, which is the smallest value, will be chosen first. And that activity is activity 25. So I put that thing as number two. I put the activity, those activities. So that's, that's why that activity is there. Because what I did is basically I look at the early start date. When there are many, many activities having the same early start date, then we need to choose which one is first. Then basically we need to look at the total float. So this is what the step uh, in this slide is basically telling us. Okay. Next would be, uh, next would be, ah, you see, uh, this one is we are the setter. Then there are two activity, uh, which basically having the same um, date, early start date, on the fifth day. But then look at the total float. So it looks like the total float three is much smaller than the total float four. So that's why activity two three is being put there. Okay, put there. All right, then, uh, then we basically put the uh, uh, item, the last item there. Okay, so that will be activity number four. Okay, so that's how we sort activity. Then uh, come the next activity. So it looks like activity, next activity would have the same early start date. Again, total float would basically uh, be chosen uh, the smaller value and at the end of the day we are going to put activity four five in item number four number five and then subsequently item number six and then the rest basically doesn't have the similarity anymore but we basically uh, put whichever next uh, uh, basically bigger early start would be next and then how do we get item five six is there and then subsequently, item 6, 7, 8, and then 9. Okay, so if we do that, we already lead the activity according to which one comes first. According to early start date. Eh? We, are talk we are talking about early start date. So, so this is what I call sort and list. Sort meaning to say we sort according to early start. And if there are two activities uh, having the same early start, then we can take a look at the total float. At the end of the day, we are going to have this list. Okay, what we are going to do with this list? Ah, okay, now we are going, uh, now it's already 10.14. So let's take a 10 minute break before we go into the rest of the slide. Okay, so 10 minute break, please.
Okay, let's continue with the, the results of the slide. Okay, so the first step is basically to coming to come up with the uh, sorting of the early start uh, activity, and then if there are two uh, or more activity having the same early start, then we have to look at the total float. Then at the end of the day, we are going to get this kind of uh, listing. Okay, so that would be our uh, first uh, exercise there. Then after we are getting this thing, then only we can draw what we call resource histogram. There are many ways to draw. Okay, one of the way is basically to draw like this. Or later on, I will show you to draw in a much simpler way, uh, as if uh, what the computer software normally will draw. Okay, so in this kind of drawing, uh, the, the good thing is that. Uh, there are this graph basically show three in one. What is the three in one? So the first one is basically time, time in terms of the duration of the activity, and then label plus the activity uh, name or numbering. Okay, so this example of activity name. So that's why three in one. So the timing of the activity is there. Label is there, and then even the activity name. But if, for instance, we are using uh, computer software or we are using based on uh, timing, so we are just simply going to plot the graph according to label versus time, not the activity. So if you want to know the activity, then you have to uh, look at the bar chart uh, together with the bar chart. Then only you, you can know. Oh, this this um, label basically work in in uh, that particular activity. Okay, that is the issue. Okay, now how to draw this uh, diagram? Okay, first thing first, we focus on our listing here. Okay, let me erase the thing. Okay, let me. We are going to focus on the listing of the activity such as activity number one and two first. Activity one and two start at zero, zero day, okay? When is activity one and two going to finish? So you need to take a look at the duration. Duration is, where is it the duration? Oh, duration is here, five. So we know that this activity number one and two is basically five days. Maybe we can draw something like this. The duration is basically five, five days. Okay. So start in zero. This is the first uh, line that we are going to draw. Then we are going to finish in the fifth day. So this is the line. And how many labor for activity one and two? Okay. Labor of activity one and two is basically three. So three percent. So this will be three percent. So now you are basically drawing a block for activity one, two, the resource requirement. So meaning to say this kind of graph, uh, it is easier to read in terms of, let's say if in the day number two, how many labor require you? So you know, day number two is basically three labor. And the work is basically uh, happening in activity one, two. So that's why this, we call it this three and one graph. Not only we know the timing, we know the labor, and we also know the activity name, okay? So that, that would be the first activity based on this listing. And then number two, Number two is basically activity two five. Start on the fifth day. What is the duration of two five? Let's go back to two five would be eight days. This one, eight days. Okay. Right here, eight days. All right. And then uh, how many labor? Labor would be four. Okay, so. On the fifth 
this is basically the start of activity two five and then it will go on until eight days so eight days mean to say eight plus uh, five equivalent to 13. see you will draw this line and then how many number of workers basically three so this is activity two five that occupy this uh, resources to grant then you go for activity two three we shall also uh, start on the fifth and then two three would basically two three would basically is six days six days this is four and how many laborer uh basically four and three okay focus on four so activity two three start on the same day so you cannot you have to overlap interval drawing because uh we are we are showing the resource aggregation aggregation means to say the cumulative resources so the graph you have to draw on top of the existing graph because uh the bottom graph is already being occupied by uh, activity two four two five in terms of drawing and then activity two three will finish on uh, six days there and number of workers is also uh, number of workers is basically four okay so four so this is the graph for activity two three and then uh, next would be activity two four Two four would be four days and number of workers would be uh, four. Okay. Two three would be four. Four. Eh? Okay. Based on the data. Ready? This this one that you get, and then you are going to draw this block. Okay. So that is the purpose of V. Uh, listing out the activity according to the, the earliest start first, subsequently uh, the following start, and then so that we can draw uh, them according to the uh, uh, the existing uh, in terms of the timing. Okay, and so the rest of the drawing will basically uh, utilize the same concept, except that you might wonder what is this thing? Why four and four, uh, four and seven is being split there? Ah, this is an example because the way we are uh, we draw our graph is like a building block there once it is being occupied by certain uh, activity there for sure uh, the these uh, four seven have to be split it is similar to this concept okay, let's take a look at this example let's say we do have the red uh, activity from day number two until day number uh, 10 uh, this activity we call it x okay activity x let's say activity x huh? and you know x then activity y activity y is basically six days uh six days okay kita tengok activity uh, x six days tapi dia, dia basically it start on the six days uh, whereas okay activity x is like this and green one basically it start from the day number six until day until young day number 12 but the six days okay whereas young uh, x basically start from day number two until day number 10. so when we build a resource aggregation using manual uh, graph here so you notice that there is an empty space here empty space here so empty space, the right way to draw the drawing. So it should be like this. Ah, so this is how uh, the green uh, bar there is being split because there is no more activity uh, being mentioned between 10 and uh, 12 days. So that's why certain uh, the resource aggregation bar is being split. So similar concept is this one. Okay the concept is this one four seven you might wonder why it is split well because it uh, certain space is already occupied by activity five six then for sure four seven 
uh, need to be built up on top of that uh, graph there, then it is going to be split. So at the end of the day, what matter the most? Okay, what matter the most? It is not the let me erase. Okay, okay, what matter the most is the auto the the outer part of this graph here, this one. This is what our resource histogram basically looks like, isn't it? Uh, so our resource histogram looks like up and down. There are peak here, and then there is a trough here, and there is another peak here, and and a peak here again. Okay. So this is the resource histogram based on early start uh, sorting and listing okay that would be the first uh, exercise as being shown in here so table one based on table one we have not completed uh, this exercise yet we are going to go for table two because we need to make comparison okay so if it is based on early start so this is the graph so let's say on day number eight if I want to read this graph, so I would basically say, okay, on day number eight, the number of resources that I need to use is basically 11, because this 11 is here. That will be the 11 uh, number of liberal, uh, the total number of liberal. But then I can also read another thing. I can also read that, oh, some of the workers uh, three number will be working on this uh, project, this activity to five, and then uh, perhaps four, two, three, activity two, three, let's say two, three will be four, okay. So four number of worker will be working on uh, activity two, three, and then perhaps another four will be working on this activity. You see, that is the way uh, we basically read uh, this diagram so that's why i mentioned this is three in one diagram that show the timing show the number of liberal and also show the activity uh, name that is the purpose okay if for instance in the question assignment or whatever if you are able to draw this graph okay let's say based on early start or late start and the question asks uh, on uh, on what particular day uh, what is the number of workers required so based on this graph you can easily identify the peak uh, the maximum number of workers uh, from this graph would be on uh, on uh, 12 days okay this is 12 days so that will be maybe around 12 uh, that is the issue okay Next would be our late start sorting, table number two. Okay, this is what we call table number two, sort and list activity. Okay, so we do the same uh, kind of exercise as we did in table number one. So sorting must be based on this thing, but now we are using late start uh, value. Where do we, where do you get all the early start, late start? It is based on the diagram that we already worked on before, this diagram, network diagram. So that, that's why in order to solve this problem, we need to come up with a network diagram. If we are using it manual, manual, uh, manual calculation. Eh? Okay, so now next would be, okay. So based on sort thing number one, so for sure we are going to start the late start with the uh, zero and then subsequently the next uh, uh, bigger value of late start will be five and it looks like from this uh, listing it looks like um, there are no two two activity or more that basically having the same uh, late start so basically we just simply are going to list them according to which one appear first and until the end. So basically, total float, we basically no need just for the sake of uh, listing there. Okay. So now we get this kind of activity. 
So this is activity number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then uh, nine, sorry. And then we can start draw our resource histogram. Okay, so again, we start with uh, this activity, activity one, two, which is also similar to uh, what we call it uh, early start because normally if activity one, two doesn't have any uh, total float value, you notice that total float, they will be equivalent to the uh, uh, early start date anyway. Okay, so we start with zero, zero is here, and then five days is here, and then three, it's supposed to be three, so the, 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 the scale is a little bit off, that's okay. So this is what we call, uh, let's start for activity one, two, which is also similar to the early start, because activity one, two doesn't have any, any total float, so it basically start there. Okay, how about activity 2.5? I think 2.5 is also similar to this uh, according to the early start because the total float is the same. Okay, so based on uh, wait, where is it? Okay, based on this uh, 2.5, hang on. Oh, yeah. So we basically start on the fifth day and then ended up in 13th day. And then basically they use the same uh, three number of liberal. So activity two five is there. Then activity two three. So activity two three is a little bit different. Uh, it start on the eighth day. Okay, it start on the eighth day and then uh, total float is there. So let's say this is eight days and then how many days depend on duration of the activity and then how many number of workers is there is given in the diagram so we basically draw and then subsequently activity 24 but 24 is being split because activity 23 is uh, occupied uh, on the same date there okay never mind because we we are going to see the building up of the uh, resource histogram the most important thing we already have the shape this is the shape the outer layer of the graph this is what we are focusing on. Okay. And after you draw this kind of diagram, what we need to do is basically you need we need to compare. This is the diagram based on what we call early start. Let me erase this thing. Okay, it looks like this. Okay, it looks like this. Then this is like the diagram based on the late start. Let me erase this. So from if if you have the diagram side by side, you, you should be able to uh, see more clearly. So based on this diagram, which one is much, much better in terms of uh, in terms of smoothing? Okay, in terms of smoothing, which one is better? Okay, let me show you again. This is based on early start. Okay. And then next will be on late start. So meaning to say both diagram is basically on the other extreme. One is basically on the early start. One is on the later start. Okay. So what happened is that it looks like um, maybe, okay, maybe, from this exercise, it looks like the late start is the one that will be chosen, will be chosen as a basis for us to make the adjustment. Uh, and you notice that after we make the adjustment, the graph will look like this. So this is the process after smoothing. And you notice that perhaps, uh, yeah, we are taking this, this thing remain the same because it is both the same. So two, three is also taken from here. See, two, four is also taken from here, except that this thing, this thing now has been changed or has been modified in such a way, uh, we end up our final graph that looks like this. Uh, this graph 
this is what we call a beta graph because it is a smooth. And how do we transform those things? Okay, if you notice that, if we are using the late start, we can only adjust the what we call the activity to the left side. Meaning to say some of the uh, activity uh, basically can be shifted to the left, meaning to say utilizing the float value, total float value. So now let's take a look at the total float value. So it looks like from here, which activity basically do have total float? Two, three, okay, only four activity. Two, three, two, four, four, seven, and three, seven. Two, three, uh, two, four, three, three, seven, uh, two, three, two, four, four, seven, and three, seven. Four, seven, and three, seven. Yeah, the one that I tick here, let me erase those things. So here, here, uh, is the one that basically uh, have a uh, total float. The rest basically do not have the total float. So the total float, let's say activity two, three. Activity two, three basically have total float of uh, uh, two, three activity. Yeah, man. Two, two, uh, two, three, ni, you have part of this one. Okay. Two, three have three, three days. Okay. So two, two, three, we do not adjust anything. We only adjust uh, two, four. Okay, two, four. Okay. So two, four is basically here. So what happened is that some of the activity here, three, seven. Okay, three, seven is being uh, pushed forward. Okay. Uh, push forward a little bit. And then activity four, seven is being uh, stay there. Okay, because activity 37 still have uh, some uh, empty time there, uh, some free time there. So at the end of the day, we end up to be like this. Okay. We can also use, for instance, early start activity based on this one. But if we are going to use this uh, early start activity, then we are going to uh, basically adjust uh, some of the activity toward the right. Okay, so it looks like uh, either one, one, two, two, four, two, three, and three, four, perhaps is basically uh, it's almost the same. Either you use early start or basically late start. But the only thing that we you can adjust is basically three, seven, and then four, seven. Four, seven, you adjust a little bit there. Uh, three, seven will be here. Then basically you will have a nice graph. So that's why. In order to um, do the resource moving, you really need to look at uh, your gun chart. Okay, you really need to look at the gun chart and see how many days uh, total float are available in certain activity and do the adjustment uh, manually. Even if you are using computer, then basically you still have to look at those things. When the good thing about using the computer, once you adjust your bar chart, a little bit uh, either to the left or to the right based on available total float, then automatically you can take a look at the uh, uh, what we call a resource diagram. So if that resource diagram looks okay, so instead of um, normally people would basically use uh, project scheduling based on early start for, uh, for whatever reason, for sim simplicity reason, but then what I, uh, we can conclude is that a good scheduler, a good scheduler will basically look at uh, all aspects, uh, not only uh, in terms of the uh, duration of the activity, uh, in, the, in terms of the timing of the activity, but also in terms of the resources utilization. If you can still remember in introduction, my introduction slide in uh, planning and scheduling, uh, I mentioned about the reason, okay? The reason for scheduling is basically for a proper optimization of resources. Uh, if 
we put resources as part of the scheduling. But in some reality, uh, in the real environment, people do not put resources because it is too complicated because it just, there are a lot of resources. Uh, that would be the issue. If, for instance, uh, uh, you really wanted to, to, uh, to uh, do this kind of exercise, uh, this is example, okay? Okay, and then resource, uh, uh, there is another example. Maybe we can take a look at this. Okay, let's say in uh, another example, there is much more uh, what we call activity going on here. Uh, don't uh, focus on all the detail here. What we want to show is only this. Let's say we go through the same concept, we list all the activity, and then uh, duration is there. Okay. The early start date is uh, being tabulated, total float is tab uh, tabulated so that we can see everything, resources is there. Then we go through the process of uh, developing table one based on early start date. Uh, then we are going to come uh, to, to basically get the, uh, uh, the value. This is basically equivalent to early start and total float as in, as in table one. This one is basically let's start and then total float as in table two that we mentioned. After we already did this, then we can only do the drawing. You see, these two drawing, uh, because we put it together, now you can see much clearly. Let's say based on early start, so the three in one diagram looks like this. And then based on late start, the diagram basically looks like this. Then we make comparison. Which one is a, a better graph? Maybe if we can superimpose the graph, then basically we can see. So lastly, in this exercise, for instance, the conclusion that basically uh, this exercise show us, the final activity uh, timing that we are going to take is basically early start. Some of the activity, we are going to take the early start because it looks nice already. And then, um, Whereas the, uh, the issue of late start, there are some uh, peak activity. So this peak activity, can we do something about that? In order to know whether we can do something or not, activity five, nine, and eight, 10, we have to take a look at five, nine, and eight, 10. Five, nine, and eight, 10. So it looks like this activity do have total float of 16 days, Eight, ten do have a total float of five days. Meaning to say, activity five and nine, if we are using uh, the concept of uh, late start, because originally late start means to say, you push until the end of the date. If you want to adjust the activity, you have to, to push to the left uh, for the earlier, a little bit earlier start, okay? So this is uh, what the drawing basically is showing us, how basically we can push activity five, nine, a uh, few days earlier, and then uh, activity eight days, uh, eight, 10, a few days earlier within the available total float, okay, within, because we do not want to adjust anything. You notice that uh, early start date, completion is around maybe 34 day, 34 day, even after adjusting, uh, so that the graph will look much more smooth, the completion date is remain the same. Ah, that is the concept, okay? Uh, except that now we are already uh, getting the graph which basically a uh, little bit more smooth, which is more manageable, okay? Smooth not necessarily uh, mean that the graph is going to have to be like this exactly. No, no, no. Because there are some situations where you you simply cannot adjust anymore because the total float might not be available. You see, with regard to certain activity, total float zero zero zero, you simply cannot adjust anymore. But having this kind of uh, 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 what we call peak, it looks like this kind of diagram do have two peaks here, one peak and then another peak here. But it is it is not too bad because within the manageable. And if you look, you if you look at the number of uh, 
uh, workers there is not that many. We are talking about uh, five, six person which we can adjust. If, for instance, we are dealing with uh, 50, 60, 70 big number, uh, then that could be uh, another big headache to resolve the issue. Okay, so resource leveling. Uh, resource leveling is a much simpler uh, exercise. It is basically basically continuation from uh, resource smoothing. Let's say once we already uh, come up with the sorting early start and late start, then basically we can decide which one we are going to choose. But the resource leveling simply mean we limit the resources. Okay, for instance, we limit the resources. Okay, let's go into the step by step. So the step basically do is very similar to resource moving. We need to do the listing based on early start and total float, and then listing based on the late start and total float, etc., etc. And we do the resource, uh, uh, what we call resource leveling. And then at the end of the day, we are going to see how the resource graph looks like, but then we are going to level. Example, okay, let's go back to uh, our example here. Okay, let's say this is what we call resource uh, smoothing. But let's say in uh, one of the scenario, let's say this is the final graph that we use, but still the issue is that, okay, the issue is that, Let's say we want to limit the workers only eight. Let's say we want to limit eight. So limit uh, workers eight only at all time. So that is the limit. And most of the time, uh, this could be the practice that we normally use. So if, for instance, this is the final graph that we are using, and on top of that, we want to limit to do the resource uh, limitation. Or we can use the uh, previous graph. Let's say we are in this uh, category of the graph and then uh, we want to limit. So we can, we can basically apply on the same concept. Okay, let's take a look at this thing. Let's say we want to limit. What happened is that on the day number nine, 10 and until 13, it looks like this activity is basically beyond the limit because we limit uh, the workers uh, on at eight number of number of workers but then we require more than eight actually 11 uh, based on the total number which basically this is what we call over allocation over allocation so if we are using computer, then computer basically will uh, will show this kind of graph in red color. So over allocated resources, and the computer will ask you what you are going to do. So we should basically react either to add more resources, or we can adjust in terms of the timing if the timing permit. Okay, so let's say. Activity 2.4. Let's take a look at activity 2.4 in terms of the total float. Activity 2.4 total float is basically uh, 4. Activity 2.4 total float is 4. Okay, now let's take a look at 9. Uh, let's start 9. Okay, let me see. Take a look at early start. Where is it? Early start. Uh, 2.4 early start is 5. So it looks like activity 2.4. Okay. So it looks like activity 2.4 is on the ninth day, meaning to say we basically based on the late start value. If it is late start value, we cannot adjust to the right anymore. We cannot basically uh, extend this activity to be done on the 13th day, 14th day, etc. etc. It can be done uh, at much earlier date. Okay, but then you must see the connection between uh, activity 2.4 and 2.3. You cannot basically do activity 2.4 much earlier than 2.3. Two, two, uh, two, uh, that would be illogical. What happens is that uh, in this situation, it looks like if we, if we are in this situation, 
it looks like activity two four have to be shifted here somewhere somewhere maybe on the 13 14 whatever day some some of the activity two four have to be extended uh, beyond uh, 13 day so meaning to say activity five six three seven or etc have to be pushed a little forward in order to allow activity two four to be done so at the end of the day you notice that this uh, period will have to be extended. So this is what I mean by when we want to limit the resources, there could be possibility that the timing of the time frame of the whatever the group of uh, activity that we have in this example um, have to be extended by a few days. Uh, that is the scenario of resource limit uh, resource leveling or limit 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 limitation resource limitation. Whereas in the case of resource smoothing, we do not go beyond uh, the uh, time period that we already set because we only adjust the activity according to available total flood. But resource leveling, the issue is that because we want to limit the resources and uh, and those activities still need to be done so how are we going to complete the, the the activity for sure you need to push the activity forward uh, and then the the, the the subsequent activity have to make way for the the current activity which basically require more resources than what we already allocated okay that is example of resource leveling. Resource leveling is much easier because it is very straightforward. And uh, okay, now let's uh, take a look at another example. Okay, this example. Simple example, we do have a few activity. Let's say activity A, activity A, B, C, D, E, a few activities. And then the duration, uh, the predecessor is given, the duration is given, the level is given. So first thing first, we must develop network diagram. Let's say we use uh, AON diagram because, because it is a simple diagram, it is a simple relationship. So this one is basically the early start date. This is the early finish. This is the late start and late finish date. So everything is... Uh, is there okay and we are going to complete on the 14 day and then the uh, it looks like the critical path will be on b uh, let me see uh where is it yeah e d and b is the critical path because it is the longest duration in the network diagram so we already resolved the network diagram. Okay, now, so next would be um, tabulating the resources. Okay, so this diagram is exactly what basically Microsoft project will show you. We have the bar chart, A, B, C, D, E, and uh, the numbering inside the bar chart indicate uh, liberal, okay, so that we can just basically show uh, immediately but in in microsoft project the the value will not be shown the value will be shown in uh, you have to uh, click on resource uh, resource usage view but the tabulation is there okay so uh, the reason why we we put the the value there so that we can see uh, how we basically tabulate the resource histogram you notice that there is an empty space here the different color coloring here. This coloring indicate total flood. So meaning to say activity which basically green in color there. Activity A, A, and then C do have total flood. How do we calculate total flood for A, uh, for A and basically C? We can just basically uh, make uh, take the differences between this value 7 minus 5 equivalent to 2 or 2 minus 0. So total flow is 2 and then activity C 
we can take 12 minus 8 equivalent to 4 or, 5, or 9 minus 5 equivalent to 4. So basically, the, the one that I uh, noted by HS here indicate the total float for that activity. Okay, so based on the early start, let's say this is the early start uh, drawing, then we can tabulate the level. How to get the level? Very easy. You just add the value 2 plus 4 equivalent to 6. 2 plus 4 equivalent to 6. Here, all this value, this is what the value being shown. Okay, value being shown. This is what we call resource histogram. If you plot the resources using the graph that uh, simple graph, then you will see the up and down of resources and the peak resources would be seven. And how do we plot the graph? Here, next. Ah, this is the plotting of the graph. You see, this is basically the graph. Six value, six, 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 six. Now it is seven. Seven, seven. This is six. This is three, 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 three. This is going to be two and two. So that is what exactly this value is uh, showing here. And Microsoft Project will show this kind of graph, this type of graph. Okay. It is much easier compared to the one that we show you because uh, that is uh, three in one. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, now the issue, let's say this, uh, the red color there, let's say uh, in the resource leveling, we limit the resource. We limit the resource for six level only at one time. Okay, we limit the resources uh, six uh, person at one time. So it looks like in the day, is it on the day number six and seven? This is day six and seven. It looks like uh, this uh, day six and seven we do have what we call over allocated resources. Our activity require seven laborer, but we the maximum limit that we allow uh, basically only six. Okay, so that is the situation because of the resource limitation. Okay, what shall we do? Okay, now what shall we do is uh, this is the situation. You can see, uh, you can see uh, if we put the 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 bar chart together. This is the bar chart, and then the resource histogram together. And uh, you can see more clearly. Okay, this is seven, seven here. This value. So this is basically seven and seven. So this is the issue. Okay, the the limit is basically six. Now, what? How are we going to resolve this uh, problem? Okay, next would be resolving the, the problem based on resource limitation. Okay, you notice that activity C do have uh, uh, what we call total float equivalent to four days. Four days is being shown here. This is four days. Four days. If it is we based on the early start, then uh, the total float will be at the end of the bar uh, for it will not appear in the Microsoft whatever in terms of the bar there, but we, we know basically based on our calculation. So that would be the total float. So meaning to say, let's say activity C, what happened is that I push activity C to start a little bit late by two days. Instead of starting at here, this uh, date here, I push the activity a little bit uh, late so the X is indicated by float. I utilize the float. I utilize the float two days early, but then I still have another two, two more days at the back there, which I can still use if I want. Let, let's say what would happen if I utilize the float two days, meaning to, meaning to say, I push the activity uh, C a little, bit, uh, a little bit late by two days only and see what would happen to the resource histogram. Now, you see, when I, I do that, when I plot the graph, it looks like 
Okay. We do have on the uh, six and seven. This is the issue. Six and seven day. Oh, our resources now has been reduced to four, which is uh, okay. Still uh, within the limit because we limit at six. We managed to do that. Okay. But you notice, uh, you notice some, something. There is an increase of uh, what we call uh, resources on day number eight and nine. You notice here and here compared to the previous one. Previous one, eight and nine. Uh, sorry, which one is it? Here, uh, eight and nine. I see. Uh, eight, uh, eight is okay. Or oh, nine and ten. Sorry, nine and ten. Nine and ten. Uh, three and three originally, but now I already increased nine and ten to six, three more resources. But six is still within the limit. That's, that should be okay. If we, if we do not want to do anything with that, that will be fine. But, uh, but let's take into another step further. Okay, this one. Another step further. You know what? This uh, another example. Okay, you notice that, yeah, activity C, we start at a little bit uh, late by two days. Now, this is what we, we already adjusted. But then, you notice this one. Activity A do have two days of free float here that we have not used before because we just simply use the early start. But then, what if, what if, if activity A also, instead of using the early start date, we push until the limit, we use the late start date. So this is when activity A will start. And what would happen to the, uh, what we call our uh, resource histogram. So it looks like the resource histogram now looks like this. You see? Uh, resource histogram looks like this, which in comparison with the uh, the previous one, we do have something like this. And if we compare, this graph looks much better. It is, it is like this graph has been smooth a little bit. Uh, this is an example. Okay? And you notice one thing. Uh, since we are using the, uh, we, we are adjusting the what we call the activity within the float, we do not change anything in terms of the project duration date. Project still uh, can be completed within 14 days. And that is a good thing about uh, when we are able to, 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 to use the total float uh, in accordance to whatever limit they are allowed. We still can get a very nice graph and then at the same time, uh, we can reduce the number of the workers in terms of we just simply set the limit. In order to do this, it is not an easy job. It is the job of the scheduler or planner. The real scheduler or planner, when they, they come up with the project scheduling, not only they can fit within the contractual period, that would be one thing, but they must be able to, to come out with the planning which optimize all the resources, meaning to say, to utilize all kind of construction, met the right construction method. And at the end of the day, the cost should be at the, uh, the lowest possible. And uh, that should be the idea, but it is not going to be easy. A lot of people simply do not do that. As long as the project is still making profit, why bother? Uh, because after all, profit is not, is not going into my pocket anyway. I'm just getting my, monthly salary, uh, that would be the, the issue. Lah. Unless you are running your own project, uh, that would be a different story. Okay, now, another example. Another simple example, which is uh, also the same as uh, this one. Okay, now, it's the same concept. Let's say, uh, we do have a few uh, double-story uh, school project and the, the bar chart is being shown here, and you see the dotted line is uh, show that these three activity, activity two, four, two, six, and then six, seven do have a free float by a few weeks, okay? 
Activity two four have free float a two four uh, one week. Activity two six is one two three four five six. Okay, six a uh, week, etc. Okay, now let's plot this graph based on early start date. Okay, based on early start date, you notice that the total float, a dotted line there is at the back of the bar chart. So meaning to say, we push the activity as early as possible. Then when you plot the graph, how do you plot? Based on the quantity of uh, labor, let's say four or five. So this is four, 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 four. Then you will plot four, 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 four. And then this one, if you add the value five, two, three, so you will get 10. So 10, then this one is out of 10. Then the, this one is basically five here. So the, the graph is a little bit off not in accordance to the line there, but that's okay. We just want to take a look at the look of the graph. So this is the how the graph looks like based on the early start. Then how about if we use the late start? Late start. You see, you notice that the dotted line has been pushed uh, uh, to the left, whereas the real activity has been pushed to the back, meaning to say we are pushing the activity which basically have total float uh, to the latest start. And you look at the graph. So the graph look like this. So based on our concept, once we do have graph based on early start and then late start, then you start to make comparison between graph. Which graph basically look much, uh, much uh, nicer? For sure, you are going to choose the graph based on the late start. So, but uh, except this peak there. Okay, if you look at this peak, where does this peak come from? This would be on the day number 11. Day 11 is here. Uh, 3 plus 7 would be 10. So this is 10. The graph is a little bit off. That's okay. So, um, so the the graph is coming from these two activity, activity two six and five four. So the issue is that can we do something with activity uh, two six and five four? For sure, we cannot do anything with five four because it doesn't have any total float. So meaning to say that activity will start there at the that time frame. The only thing that we can push is activity two six and uh, two six by uh, by by one two three four five uh, six weeks on the left because we are using the late start so meaning to say if i am going to push this activity to the left which uh, which uh, which basically date i will i will basically land so it looks like if i land to the early start so it looks like this but then again if you uh, total up the value it will basically looks like the 10 will be here also so if you want to push a little bit um there is not much space that you can push actually you see uh, that is the situation because there is not many um total float uh, available in many many uh, activity so perhaps you can push around it looks still looks like uh, the, the peak will be somewhere here. So maybe this could be the best choice. So, so basically you stick to this uh, diagram. You can, you can try to adjust to the best possible uh, look of the graph, but I think not much difference. So perhaps this could be the best that you can uh, finalize with. But that's okay. okay. If you are going to compare with this one, it's much worse. I would say this could be better. So in that situation, that will be the conclusion. Okay, so lastly, um, lastly, the uh, example. Okay, let's take another example. Let's say we do have one small project. One small project. The network diagram is already given, the arrow diagram. So it looks like the this is the early start, early start, this is the early finish, late start, and late finish date is there. 
and the one I mark yellow is basically on the critical path. Let's say we already uh, complete on the calculation of this thing, then we can do something else. First thing first. Okay. All right. We come up with what we call a tabulation of early start. Early start using the same concept that we learned before. And this is three in one diagram that consists of time, man, number of people, and then also the activity naming. Okay, so we start with zero. Zero is here. And then activity one, two is basically duration is two days and then uh, require two people. So activity one, two is there. So you do the drawing and you get this kind of graph based on early start resource histogram. Okay. Then you repeat the same process, but using the late start. So this is the late start diagram. Then you make comparison. Which one is better? So it looks like early start is like this. We do have a few peak there. You pick here. And then suddenly there is a, a valley there. How about the late start? Well, let's start looks, uh, looks okay already, except this one that perhaps we can adjust. So in order to adjust that bongo there, three, four there, take a look at this thing. Three, four, minus three, four. What is the total float? Only two. If we are using late start, meaning to say we can push the activity to the left only. Because you cannot push the, the activity to the right because this is the latest start date. So it looks like, it looks like, let's say, uh, if we want to push this activity, okay, two more days, this is the total float. We can push to the right, looks like here or even here. So it looks like not much, not much differences. Okay, perhaps, uh, how about other activity? Two, four, and then uh, three, four. Two, four. Uh, two, four is, uh, we do the activity, we push forward. So it looks like we are going to have a few uh, trough uh, valley there, so which might not be very good. Okay, so we are going to end up something like this. So perhaps the best thing is basically we push activity three, four uh, here at the big, very beginning. And that's it. That is the one that basically we are going to uh, adopt. So only one activity that we are going to use the early start date instead of uh, late start date. So the rest of the activity should be okay. Uh, that is example of the conclusion that we can make. This is example of resource smoothing. Then, another example, lastly, about resource leveling. Let's say we already decide to use this uh, graph okay, for our resource smoothing, but then the issue is that we want to limit the resources. That is basically resource le uh, leveling. We want to limit the resources only five. Let's say five. Five is here. Five is here, so we limit five. So it looks like if we limit five, then a few activity, okay, few activity such as this one and then even three, four will be affected because they basically require in cumulative uh, more than five, okay. So it is not sufficient in terms of number of laborers. So what shall we do? So the conclusion is like this. So you notice that one, two, two, three, and uh, two, four, and three, four. So it looks like, okay, this activity, one, two, 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 three, and three, four, and two, four, will be, uh, will be prioritized because we cannot, uh, Sometimes we, ne we need to take a look at the uh, logic of activity as well. But what happened is that once we prioritize activity 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, and 2, 4, see? 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, and 2, 4. 
and within the limit of five uh, people there, what happens is that activity three, four, four, five, and five, six will be pushed forward a little bit. And you notice one thing the previous uh, duration of the activity completed on the 16 days. But then, if we use the resource limit, we not, you notice that, see, now the project or the activity uh, grouping here will be completed uh, by a few days more, which is basically, how many days? 16, uh, 22 will be eight more days. Eight more uh, extra days, you see? We basically uh, fulfill our objective to limit the laborer. Uh, sometimes we limit the laborer or we limit whatever resources for easy uh, uh, management. We do not want to have a headache and thinking about uh, tomorrow we are going to need more or less. No, no, just basically we do have a consistent number of laborer. But then uh, what to do? We sometimes we need to basically uh, push the activity uh, at a later date. If our project allow us to do that, why not? Okay. So in this scenario, you can see that the, the activity duration has been pushed a little bit uh, more day, extra days. But in the previous example that I mentioned uh, here, um, even though we limit the resources, but we can still manage to complete the activity within the initial or the original project timeline uh, due to the fact that we only adjust according to available total fruit. So perhaps by now you would appreciate the why basically we we want to know the early start date, uh, late uh, early 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 start and late start date because we can apply those things for uh, resource leveling and smoothing so that we can optimize the usage of our resources. Okay, so that will be the concept in the resource smoothing and leveling. So any question so far? So we already completed on our first slide. There's a long, long, long slide anyway. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, apa beza total float dengan free float sebab I thought that total float it is shared throughout the whole route but the free float is uh, the delay in between, uh, in between yeah. the activities and yeah yeah betul so uh, total float normally we are going uh, total float uh, is basically uh, within the what we call path and that total float will have implication toward the project, the overall project duration. Mm -hmm. uh, itulah yang sebenarnya yang kenapa kita gunakan benda tu. Because at the end of the day, we want to know whether when we do some kind of adjustment, is it going to be to adjust the overall project duration or not? In the case of project smoothing, uh, we, we, we want to maintain the the overall uh, project completion date lah kan sebab tu kita mm -hmm. kita gunakan total float uh, whereas uh, in the case of yang yang apa tu yang uh, uh, leveling tadi it basically can little bit go further tetapi whatever it is uh, free float normally appear uh, when uh, uh, at the junction at the junction aja pun of certain mm -hmm. activity uh, tapi dia kot mana pun dia akan interrelated juga mm -hmm. when you you look at uh, delay for instance uh, if for instance certain activity will go beyond katakanlah contoh certain activity you increase the duration of the activity sekarang ni activity tadi we do not increase any duration pun duration basically stick at the same 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 duration pun uh, mm -hmm. If, for instance, in certain situation, we increase the duration of uh, that particular activity, uh, then perhaps it will affect the free float of that activity, and subsequently it could affect the uh, it could basically push the subsequent activity. And at the end of the day, silat silat ribulan, uh, those activity which basically have a free float, then subsequently they might basically do, they might not have any free float they now become the critical activity also 
in within the 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 line lah. Oh okay, tapi sebab I'm confused sebab untuk example dua ni. Ah yes. Activity A dengan C, free float untuk C is uh, four days. Tapi if A pula free float, total float for C is four days. Ah. Total float untuk A is two days. Yeah yeah. So it's shared kan. So total to, the total total float is it six days ke four days? Uh, sekejap untuk activity. Example dua. Untuk activity. Uh, A dengan C. Dia punya total float ke apa? Ah, uh, total float. Total float for activity A is uh, two. Betul, but what's it called? I thought that the total float is shared throughout the route. Bukan. Uh, the route, uh, the route yang maksudnya untuk uh, route ACE A-C-E lah. Uh. ACE. Tetapi kalau dia dah dia dah dia dah utilize sebab masalah dia A dengan uh, kalau kita lihat contohnya uh, sekejap eh A5 plus 3 8 9 8 mana lagi satu aktiviti oh dia pergi ke, ke sini. Uh, 5 10 12 5 3 8 10 masih lagi pendek. Okey. Jadi kalau kita lihat contoh If for instance activity uh, A tu uh, dia ada total float two days, mm-hmm. katakanlah you delay two days activity A maksudnya dia punya duration instead of five jadi seven. Mm-hmm. Jadi uh, kalau dah jadi seven, if you recalculate, it will affect yang mana satu? C will right. affect. It will affect. Uh, yeah, it will affect. C tetapi C masih lagi ada kot uh, 5, 7 7 campur 3 ialah 10 10 uh, still masih lagi ada lagi sebab oh, C oh, tadi okay. uh, C tadi dia total float dia ialah 4 sekarang ni uh, A dah guna 2 hmm. guna additional 2 lah maksudnya you nampak tak balance dia balance dia hanya 2 lagi original dia 4, C tu ada 4 Hmm. Oh, okay. Bila dia dah dia dah push tadi, dia hanya balance ada dua lagi. Ha, macam itulah okay. konsep dia. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, wow, wow. Alright, alright. Okay, terima kasih. Okay, so um, okay, we already completed um, uh, first slide. Okay, now we shall take a break before we go into the next slide. Okay, we shall take a ten minute break. So we will come back about around twelve. Are you going to take a lunch break or how? Take a lunch break. Huh? 